Hello YouTube! I have built a two-cylinder LEGO pneumatic engine. Um, yeah, basically it has two cylinders. They're 90 degrees offset. And uh, this up here is a flywheel. That basically just smooths out the operation of the engine. It can run without the flywheel, but it's not as smooth, like I said. So in any case, I do have a Lego pump here, so here you can see it will power the engine. Obviously it's kind of slow though, so what I'm going to do is, well, first I can pump it faster if I hold this down. Obviously, though, that's still not really fast. So what I've got here is a pneumatic hose set, and I'm just going to hook it up to the engine right now. So... Alright, so that's hooked up. I'm going to start at about 20 PSI. I think you can see that. Alright, so here we go. Alright, so that's at 20 PSI. Um, I am running it off a compressor. That's what the whole hose set is for. The max I've run this at is about 70, and I will show you that later. But right now I'm just going to go over the su well some of the specifications. So... Everything here is Lego, except for the hoses. All of the hoses are, I believe, American... I want to say 1 16th? I, I don't know what the actual dimensions are, but I've got tons of the hose. So, and the nice thing about it is, it's, sadly, it's not flexible, or not as flexible as the Lego tubing, but that comes to an advantage where it won't slip off the connections as much. If I were to run this at 70 PSI with actual LEGO tubing, the hoses would probably come off almost immediately. So, I'm gonna crank up the pressure and show it running at high speeds. So, I've got this. Uh, Alright. So that's at about 40 right now. Let me show you that again. 40. So obviously it's going much faster than it was before. Alright, now I'll crank it up to about 60. Alright. So there we go. That's about 60. So, obviously that's going much faster now. Again, the higher the speed and pressure, the smoother it gets. So, that's just because the flywheel is moving faster. If I were to power a vehicle or some other device off of this engine, I would connect it directly to the crankshaft because the flywheel it even though it moves fast if I touch the flywheel I can almost bring the engine to a stop I'll show you so see it does not take any force to stop the engine by touching the flywheel however if I were to try to stop the engine on this gear down there, it would probably uh, make a blister on my fingers before I could get it to stop. It's almost impossible, at least at this speed. If you get closer to the lower pressures, I'm sure it wouldn't be as hard, but still. So, right now it's at about 60, which is the uh, maximum comfortable running speed. Um, I'll crank it up to 70 PSI for a second just to show you what it's like then. 
And I don't know if you can hear the valves venting, but it's much louder than it was before. Alright, so that right there is about 70 PSI. The engine is moving around quite a bit, just because of the uh, gyrations. But, uh... Alright, I'm gonna crank it back down to about 30. Alright, so that's 30. And now I'm just going to explain how the engine works. So, if I tilt it like this, you may be able to see right in there, right towards the bottom, right there, there's switches. Now there are two sets of them, one for each piston, and those gears have cams on them, and that's what changes the switches back and forth. So it therefore changes the direction of the piston, extending and or retracting. So in any case, the pistons, well the cams for the piston, the crankshaft, I believe it's two and a half studs. It's not three and it's not two because that would be either too much or too little. So in any case, that's how the whole thing works. Uh, let's see. That's the bottom, kind of bland, but again, switches are in there. Let me see if I can get a better glance at them. Yeah, that you can't really see them that well, but in any case, you get the idea of the engine. Uh, it can sit basically in any orientation. Right there, it's how I designed it to sit. It can also sit on its side, so the uh, flywheel is pointing straight up, like so. Which is how I showed it to you guys before. And it can also sit where the pistons are pointing straight up, like this. Oops. Right. I gotta move the hose if I do that. So in any case, that is my two-cylinder LEGO pneumatic engine. Um, the reason why it's moving right now, I'm not sure if you can see it wiggling back and forth, that's because these hoses down here, those right there, those are moving up and down as the piston moves back and forth. That's what's pushing the engine back and forth. So. Again. So, I could use the Lego pump to power this, but considering it's a two-cylinder Lego engine, it's very inefficient. So it's easier just to use the compressor. But, yeah, that's about it. Um... I will be putting pictures on brick shelf. Um, I did at one point have a one-cylinder pneumatic engine, but I got kind of ecstatic, and I took it apart to build a two-cylinder one, which is what you can see here. It's almost identical to the two-cylinder, except you're taking out one whole cylinder. So it's just shortened by about four studs. Um, but again, the one cylinder is not as good as the two cylinder because it has dead spots. Whereas the two cylinder, you can start it in any position and it will start running almost immediately because there are no dead spots and the cylinders are 90 degrees opposed. So, in any case, that's about it. Thanks for watching.